Good evening, children. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Good, good evening, evening children. Good evening. Good evening, Shubha Lakshmi. Yeah. Hi, Pranav. Hi, Meera. All right. So we are going to start the revision program uh, with this chapter quadratic uh, equations. Now we know that uh, a polynomial of the form ax square plus bx plus c is said to be a quadratic polynomial. The standard form, the standard form of a quadratic polynomial is ax square plus bx plus c. When this quadratic polynomial is equated to zero, when this quadratic polynomial is equated to zero, it's called a quadratic equation. Now, why is this a quadratic polynomial in one variable x? Because the degree, the highest power of x is two. The highest power of x is two. And hence this uh, polynomial is quadratic in one variable x. A x squared plus B x plus C is a quadratic polynomial is a standard form of a quadratic polynomial in one variable x and why is it quadratic because the highest power of x is 2 so it's quadratic and we, when you equate this quadratic polynomial to 0 it's called a quadratic equation and in general you know that uh, a quadratic equation has two zeros when we say zeros it's actually to a polynomial okay so a quadratic polynomial has a maximum of two zeros or a quadratic equation has two roots or two solutions. A quadratic equation can have a maximum of two roots or two solutions. So these solutions are the two values that can that satisfy the quadratic equation. What are these two values, the two roots or the two solutions? They are two values that satisfy the quadratic equation. See, we say that a quadratic equation can have a maximum of two roots. So it need not in all cases have two roots. It will have a maximum of two, which means the number of roots can be two, one or even zero. You must have come across this term at most. A quadratic equation has at most two zeros. A quadratic equation has at most at most two zeros, two roots, two solutions. So at most two meaning it can have two, one or none, no zeros. Or no zeros. For example, uh, if you take this, <clears throat> if you take the simple, uh, you know, uh, quadratic equation. Now x squared plus 16 is equal to zero is a quadratic equation in one variable x x squared plus 16 is equal to 0 is a quadratic equation in one variable x. The power of x is 2, so it's quadratic. And it's equal to 0, so it's a quadratic equation. x squared plus 16 is the polynomial. x squared plus 16 is the quadratic polynomial. And it's equal to 0, so it's a quadratic equation. Now, on solving this, you get how do you find the zeros or how do you find the uh, solutions or roots? You'll have to solve the equation in order to find the uh, solution or roots of the quadratic equation. You'll have to solve the quadratic equation. We have different methods of solving. OK, so we, we will learn. You actually have three methods in your syllabus, but one is, uh, you know, eliminated uh, for you. So you'll be learning two. <clears throat> OK, so to find the solutions or to find the roots, of the quadratic equation, we need to solve the equation. So let's solve this. X square is equal to minus 16. X is equal to square root of minus 16. So you know that uh, the square root of a negative number is imaginary. It's not real. There is no real value 
which can satisfy this uh, equation. X is equal to the square root of minus 16. See, if X is equal to the square root of 16, yes, it can be plus or minus 4. The square root of a negative number is not defined, does not exist, meaning it's not real, does not exist, meaning it's not real, it's imaginary. On solving this, we get x square is equal to minus 16. X is equal to the square root of minus 16. The square root of a negative number is not defined. See, now don't say minus 4 into plus 4 is minus 16. Not that. Some number into itself. It's not minus 4 into plus 4 is uh, minus 16. If you take minus 4, minus 4 into minus 4 is not minus 16. If you take 4, 4 into 4 is not minus 16. <clears throat> so there is no value. The value of uh, the, the square root of uh, minus 16 is not defined. Which means in this case, in this case, this quadratic equation, this quadratic equation has no real roots. That means its roots are imaginary. It does not have real roots, meaning the roots are imaginary. So this can be a simple example. So you can take examples. See, just take x square with a, a perfect square like plus 25 is equal to zero. Just take x square with a perfect square like plus 100 is equal to zero. Or any number like x square minus 15 is equal, sorry, plus 15 is equal to zero is also fine. So you'll get what? x square is equal to minus 15. x is equal to the square root of minus 15. So the square root of a negative number is not defined. So the roots are imaginary. It does not have any real roots. The roots are imaginary. So a quadratic equation can have two roots, can have a maximum of two roots, meaning two roots, one or no roots at all. So this is an example of a quadratic equation with no roots. No roots meaning no real roots. When we say it does not have roots, that means it has imaginary roots. It does not have any real root. That's what we're trying to say. Now this. Uh, equation which we just discussed. When we say that this quadratic equation has no roots, that means it does not have a real roots. The roots are imaginary. The roots are imaginary. All right. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> um, tell me if this is a, tell me if this one is a quadratic equation. This one, is this a quadratic equation? Quickly, you may have to work. Is this a quadratic equation? Yes. Yeah, no, because the power is two. My audible, particularly the yes. new students, Subalakshmi, uh, Meera, and uh, Pranav. Yes, ma'am. All right. Yeah. Now my question is: Is this equation a quadratic equation? Yes or no? No, ma'am. No. Others? So this one is not a quadratic equation. Mira says so. So let's check. So the what you need to remember is this is very important. You cannot decide if an equation is quadratic or not just by looking at it. Just looking at it and you know uh, deciding. Oh yeah, I can see a two here. I can see a two here. Yeah, it's quadratic because the power should be two. No, you cannot always decide like that. See, you can decide here. You can decide here because this is completely simplified. You cannot simplify this any further. It's in the standard form. It's in the standard form already. So this one you can comment by just looking at the equation. This is quadratic because the highest power of x is 2. It's already in the standard form. But this one, this one is not in the standard form. You can work this. You can simplify this further. So please do that. Please do that. Don't look at the twos. Don't look at the twos. There's a two here, two here. Okay, two means quadratic. No, it's not like that. 
It's not like that. You'll have to work it. So x square minus 1 by x square is equal to 5 quickly. So x square is the common denominator. x power 4 <clears throat> minus 1 is equal to 5. Cross multiply. x power 4 minus 1 is equal to 5 x square. All on one side, minus 5 x square plus 1. Sorry, minus 1 is equal to 0. So this one is a biquadratic equation. The highest power of x is 4. So it's biquadratic. It's a biquadratic equation. It's not quadratic. The degree of this equation or the degree of this polynomial is 4. The degree of the polynomial x to the power 4 minus 5x square minus 1. The degree is 4. So it's a biquadratic polynomial. When it's equated to 0, it is a biquadratic equation. It is not a quadratic equation. So that's what is this uh, all about, you know. Uh, you cannot, you cannot. So what you uh, should remember is uh, if the question is check if the following is a quadratic equation in X. If that is the heading, you should not decide by the face of the equation just by looking at the equation, just like looking at this. OK, there is three here and there is three here. OK, that's cubic because if it's three, it's cubic. No, it's not in the standard form. This can be simplified further. Then please simplify and then uh, conclude. You should not conclude without simplifying. If it is already in the standard form like this one, then yes, power two, it is uh, quadratic. So this one also, nothing can be done further. There's an x square term, there's an x term, there's a constant. There is an x square term, there's an x term, there's a constant. So yeah, this is quadratic. OK, so the takeaway is that uh, if you can simplify, if it is not in the standard form, please work. Simplify, bring it to the bring all the terms to one side. And have equal to zero. And then decide so like that you'll have to work this expand. How do you expand X plus to the whole cube? x plus 2 the whole cube is equal to x cubed minus 8. So it's like a plus b the whole cubed. What is a plus b the whole cubed? a cubed, a cubed plus 3a square b, 3 into a square into b plus 3ab square, a into b square plus b cubed plus 2 cubed is equal to x cubed minus 8. <clears throat> A plus B, the whole cube is equal to A cubed plus 3A square B plus 3AB square plus B cubed is equal to X cubed minus 8. So X cubed, this is plus 6X squared, 3 to the 6, 6X six squared, um, plus 2 square is 4, 4 3 is a 12, 12X plus 8 is equal to X cubed minus 8 on the other side. So X cubed, X cubed on either side gets cancelled. 8 also gets cancelled. Oh, no, no, no. I'm so sorry. It doesn't get cancelled. I'm sorry. Yeah, x cubed on either side gets cancelled. And uh, what we are left with, uh, 6x squared plus 12x. And 8 from the other side. Transpose that. So plus 8 plus 8 plus 16. Plus 16 is equal to 0. Now we have it in the standard form or in other words, we have brought all the terms to one side and we have zero on the other side. Now look at this. It is quadratic. 6x squared, it is quadratic. So you should simplify this. And then comment. <clears throat> so that's about this one. So the, these are the three methods of uh, solving a quadratic equation. Uh, factorization, completing the square and quadratic formula. Uh, am I right? You don't have completing the square, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, completing the square yes. is omitted for this year. Yes. yes. Yeah, completing the square is omitted for this year, so you don't have to worry about this method. So it's only factorize. Yes. Ma'am, but it was taught in our school, ma'am. Anthony, is it? Yes, ma'am. OK, maybe I'll do a separate recording and uh, send it to you. All right, I'll put it in the group. All of you can watch it if you're interested. I'll do it. Not okay. in the session today. Yeah, not in the session today, but I'll do it. Yeah. <clears throat>
All right, so this is not uh, in your syllabus for the does not in your syllabus. So ignore this and uh, yeah, factorization and quadratic formula. The quadratic formula and factorization. So now why quadratic formula? Because uh, factorization we have seen in uh, we saw we, we we were introduced to that in uh, class eight and uh, then in class nine also we've done a lot of factorization and now in uh, standard 10 you're introduced to the uh, quadratic formula. Why? Because it's not always possible to split the middle term and uh, factorize a quadratic equation. You know, factorizing a quadratic equation by splitting the middle term is not always easy. Until we were in class nine, we only knew one method of factorizing of uh, you know so finding the solutions of a quadratic equation. Only one method we knew by splitting the middle term. <clears throat> by splitting the middle term. But it's not always possible to find the solutions by splitting the middle term. It's not always possible. Sometimes the uh, solutions are irrational. They're not always, you know, integers. The solutions are not always integers. So sometimes they're, you know, uh, irrational numbers which cannot be found by splitting the middle term or which is highly time consuming to, you know, identify the, that by uh, splitting the middle term. So we have the quadratic formula. Quadratic uh, formula uh, is the formula which helps you to find the solutions of a quadratic equation. So simply put the values in the formula and there you get the solutions, the two solutions of the quadratic equation. So this is always this is very easy. This is always meaning using the formula and finding the solution is very simple because you just have to uh, put the values of A, B, C and find the solutions. OK, so we have the two methods uh, factorization and uh, quadratic formula. All right. Yeah. So I'll not show you this one. Yeah, I'll just work it here for you. I'll show you these slides later. Yeah. So AX squared plus BX plus C is equal to zero is the standard form of a quadratic equation in one variable X. Now we uh, understood that, uh, you know, uh, the quadratic uh, equation can have two zeros, one zero or no zeros. So when are these uh, possible? How do you identify? The situation in which the uh, equation has no roots or one root or two roots. All right. So we have something called the discriminant. We have something called the discriminant D given by the letter D, which is given by the expression B square minus 4AC. Now what is A? The coefficient of X square. What is B? The coefficient of X and C is the constant. C is the constant. A is the coefficient of X square, B is the coefficient of X and C is the constant. So to get the values of A, B, C, you should always have the given equation in the standard form. To get the values of A, B and C, you must have the equation in the standard form. So D is the discriminant. And uh, discriminant is given by the expression B square minus 4AC. Who is B? The coefficient of X whose uh, a the coefficient of x square and c the constant. And to get the values of a, b, c, the quadratic equation must be in the standard form. Now when now when you work d, you know, so you have an equation, you have an equation and when you find the value of d, when you find the value of d <clears throat> and it happens to be negative. That is that is the value of d is less than zero. All right. The value of D is less than zero. See, when you have the quadratic equation with you, you can get the values of A, B, C and hence find D, the discriminant, the value of the discriminant. And if it is negative, if it is negative, that means the value of D is less than zero. Negative numbers are less than zero. So in this case, the quadratic equation, if the value of D is less than zero, the quadratic equation has no real roots. That means the roots are imaginary, negative imaginary roots. When D is negative imaginary roots, which means no real roots. <clears throat> okay. 
when d is positive when d is positive see the three cases are d is negative d is positive and d is equal to 0 see we're just taking all the cases uh, we're taking the cases to the left and right of 0 and 0 itself we're taking the cases to the left and right of 0 and 0 itself okay so on the number line we have 0 we have the negative numbers and we have the positive numbers here so these are the these are the only three cases possible when d is 0 when d is negative when d is uh, negative okay d is negative meaning d is less than 0 and when d is greater than 0 that is positive <clears throat> so we have taken all the cases so when d is 0 who's d the value of the expression b square minus 4ac how to get abc from the given quadratic equation so when the value of d is 0 that means the quadratic equation has equal roots that means the quadratic equation has equal roots. Equal roots. Equal roots meaning coincident roots. You must remember the term. Coincident. Coincident roots. When D is 0, when D is 0, the quadratic equation has equal roots. The, the, two, the two roots are equal. So coincident roots. The roots coincide with one another coincident because they coincide with one another both are phi both are minus phi both are three by two so coincident roots equal roots are coincident roots when d is zero when d is greater than zero it'll have two roots it'll have a, a, a root alpha and a different one beta it'll have some value for alpha and some different value for beta when d is greater than zero when d is less than zero no real roots no real roots that means it, there are roots only in these two cases. When the value of D is 0, one root. That means two equal roots. And uh, when D is greater than 0, positive. Two roots, two different roots, distinct roots, unequal roots. I'll show you the slide. You don't have to write anything. Unequal, also called distinct. Unequal or distinct. See, equal, unequal. Equal roots, unequal roots. Equal roots are also called coincident roots. Unequal roots are also called distinct, different roots, distinct roots. So when does the quadratic equation have equal roots? When the value of D is equal to zero. When the value of D is equal to zero, the quadratic equation has equal roots or coincident roots. When the value of D is greater than zero, that means positive, greater than zero, anything greater than zero, the quadratic equation has unequal roots, two different roots it will have, or distinct roots. There will be one value for alpha and another value for beta. When the value of D is less than zero, if it's negative, it's less than zero, the quadratic equation has no real roots. The roots are imaginary. Okay, now this table will tell you. This table will tell you. Yeah. So when the value of D is, uh, you know, uh, greater than zero, real and unequal roots, unequal or distinct roots, distinct roots. And the roots are, the roots are, it's like this, alpha is equal to minus B, one minute. You can, I'll just write this and then you take a screenshot. Unequal is also called distinct. Remember that. Distinct. And here alpha is equal to minus B plus root D by 2A. That's a quadratic formula. You know it. And beta is equal to minus B minus root D by 2A. When D is equal to 0, real and equal roots. That is coincident roots. Coincident roots. And each root will be equal to minus b by a. That is alpha is minus b by a, minus b by 2a. And beta is also minus b by 2a. You might have not come across this. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. So don't worry. And when d is less than 0, no real roots. No real roots. Yeah, just take a picture of this one, children. This is very important. Yes. Mm. Mm. 
Somebody's mic is enabled. Please disable your mic. All right. So less than zero imaginary roots equal to zero equal roots equal to zero equal roots coincident roots. Alpha is minus B by 2A beta minus B by 2A. Greater than zero unequal roots. Both the cases are real roots only. If if there are roots, that means there are real roots only. See both the cases real roots. In both these cases, real roots. <clears throat> this one is not real. Imaginary. This one is imaginary. Unequal, distinct. Equal, coincident. Alpha, distinct roots meaning alpha is minus B plus root D by 2A and beta is minus B minus root D by 2A. And you know the quadratic formula? This is the quadratic formula. X is equal to minus B plus or minus root of B square minus 4AC by 2A. That's what is D. This B square minus 4AC is only D. So minus B plus or minus root D by 2A. This is the quadratic formula. X is equal to X is equal to minus B plus or minus root of B square minus 4AC. But what is B square minus 4AC? We call it D. Discriminant D. So minus B plus or minus root D by 2A plus or minus. So one is with plus, the other is with minus. Alpha is minus B plus root D by 2A and beta is minus B minus root D by 2A. Yeah, take a picture of this one, children. Oh no, not this. Yeah, this one. And make a note of this in your book. Done? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma All right. Yeah, quickly make a note of this in your book. I'm just looking for my phone. It's not around me. I'll just get it. Please write down this in the meantime. Ma'am, should we write this, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, please. Yes. Make a note of this. Only this table alone. I asked you to take a picture, but I think it's better you write down this in your book now. Then can we write in the same notebook? No, that's completely your choice. Better you have a different book. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, done this one, children. Once again. Yeah.
done. Yes, it's time, children. Yes, mom. All right. <clears throat> yeah. So here, uh, find the discriminant. Find the discriminant of this uh, quadratic equation. OK, now tell me uh, what is the. Uh, is it in the can you see it in the standard form? Can you see X square here? How do you know it's in the standard form? See here, this is the coefficient of X square. This is the coefficient of X and this is the constant which does not have an X or X square. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'll show you again. I'll show you again. See here. This is the coefficient of x square. You can see x square here. This is the coefficient of x. You can see x here. And this whole thing is the constant because there is no x or x square in this. There is no x or x square in this. So that's the constant. So the given quadratic equation is absolutely in the standard form. So now we need to, to find the discriminant. We need to get the values of a, b, c. But since we already have the letters a, b, c here, we'll use, a, we'll use capital letters. OK. So capital letter A, what is A? Coefficient of X square, 9A square, B square. What is B? Coefficient of X, minus 16, A, B, C, D. And uh, what is uh, C? The constant, minus 25, C square, D square. Is this understood? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Now, how do we, yes. very good. Yes. How do you find D? B square minus 4AC, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Now we just have to, yeah. So we just have to uh, put the values here. So what is it? Minus 16 A, B, C. See, you should not write like this. See, if you write this, you're wrong. If you write is equal to, uh, you know, one second, I thought I have the answers to this. I don't have. Yeah. So. Uh, what's B square? If you write, uh, you know, minus 16, minus 16 A, B, C, D square, you're wrong. This is not B square. B square is whatever is B, the whole thing should be squared. So that means minus 16 A, B, C, D square minus 4 A, C, 4 into A into C, 4 into A into C. Uh, 9 A square B square into C into minus 25 C square D square. So what is this? 256 A square B square C square D square. Don't forget that minus. Uh, please work this for me. 100, right? 25 fours are 100. 100 into 9 is 900. And minus into minus is plus. Minus into minus is plus. Minus into minus plus 25 fours are 100, 100 nines are 900. So 900. And then you can see when you multiply A square, B square, C square, D square. So they're like terms, so you can add them. They're like terms, you can add them. So it is 1,156. A square, B square, C square, D square. What's the square root? What is the square root? You don't have to find the square root anyways. Now is it, now you'll have to dis find the discriminant. This is the discriminant. What is the discriminant? This is the discriminant. When you're solving for uh, X, you have to find the square root of D. Here you can just leave it like this. D is equal to 1156 A square B square C square D square. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, 
see in the class you know you will not so you try to concentrate as much as possible you know focus more on uh, you know what i'm trying what i'm explaining and uh, get your doubts clarified you cannot i told you you cannot get time to write this in the class because then it's not possible to revise so here i'll be sharing whatever you need the uh, you know uh, we'll just walk through the chapter briefly <clears throat> So, which means uh, I think I need to talk a lot so that, you know, I share as much as possible. And you can ask your questions in case something is not clear. You can ask your questions and get it clarified. So you can use the recording again. If you want to revise this, you can just use the recording again. And while uh, using the recording, you can just scribble and understand. OK, fine. See, this one should do. So <clears throat> solve for X. Solve for x. Okay. So a into x square plus 1 is equal to x into a square plus 1, like this. So first open up the brackets. See, you know what? This is a simple one, but it looks complicated. So open up the brackets. A x squared plus a plus a square x plus x is equal to 0. Okay. Now a x square. We need to see, remember. Remember, when you split the middle term, you know, you will get two X terms in the middle. Now, the thing is how to arrange these terms. That's the difficulty. OK, we open the brackets. Oh my, I went wrong. One second. A into X squared plus one is equal to X into A squared plus one. OK, so A X squared plus A is equal to A squared X plus X. Now bring everything to one side. So A X squared. OK, plus a minus a square x minus x is equal to zero. Now the thing is how to arrange, how to arrange. How to arrange means. First, x, there are four terms. First thing is there are four terms. There is one x square term, two x terms and one constant. So arrange it in that order. Write the x square term first and then the two x terms. The two x terms can see somebody's working. Don't work. Listen to this one, then you can handle any question like this. By fluke, maybe you will get this right. But the knowledge you need to know behind this working is what I'm trying to share now so that you can do anything like this. See, when you open up the brackets and bring all the terms to one side, you have four terms of the four. Look at the four terms. There is one X square term, two X terms and one constant. So how to arrange? Write the X square term first and then the two X terms. Which order? Any order, right? Any X term first. So that's OK. And then the constant. And then you should go ahead by grouping. You must go ahead by grouping. Eighth standard grouping. All right. So now I'll write the X square term first, not the A square term. See, our variable is X. Now you'll ask me A square also has square. A square also has a square. Which square to write first? No, this is the look at X. X square should be written first and then the two X terms and then the constant. So A X square first and then the two X terms minus A square X minus X. These are the two X terms and then the constant A which does not have X in it. Is equal to zero. Now. Group group the first two terms group the last two terms. OK, now what's common? What's common? Please answer what's common. Quickly answer. Yeah. A X is common. Yeah. So X minus, minus is A. A. What's common? Mm -hmm. What's common? Minus Pass. one. Minus, minus one. one. Mm -hmm. So minus, minus A. Very good. Is equal to zero. Next step. A That's all is equal to zero. Solve for X, so we need to solve for X. So AX minus one is equal to zero. AX is equal to one. X is equal to one by A. X minus A is equal to zero. X is equal to A. So X is equal to one by A or A. That's it. Understand children? Understand the rule behind yes, working this? Yeah, open up the brackets. So that is the algorithm. Open up the brackets, bring all the terms to one side. Uh, there are four terms. There is one X square term, two X terms and one constant. Arrange it. X square and then the two X terms and then the constant. Then group. First two terms, last two terms. That's all.
Yeah. So you just have to write the equation. The perimeter of a right angle to triangle is 70 units and its hypotenuse is 29 units. Okay, so perimeter is 70 and hypotenuse is 29. Perimeter is 70. Frame an equation for the given information and write it out as a quadratic equation in X. Yeah, how do we do this? Shall we call this ABC? So what is AB plus BC plus AC? What is AB plus BC plus AC? 70. 70. So AB plus BC plus the hypotenuse AC is 29 is equal to 70. So AB plus BC is equal to 70 minus 29, 50. Oh, sorry, 40, uh, 41. So now AB is equal to 41 minus BC. So you can take this BC as X because they want an equation in X. So let this BC be X. So AB is equal to 41 minus X. Let BC be, be X. Let BC be equal to X. So AB is 49, 41 minus X. AB plus BC plus AC is equal to 70. AC is 29. So you get AB plus BC is 41. Now take, take anybody. See, I have written AB is equal to 41 minus BC. You can also write BC is equal to 41 minus AB. That's fine. So now take BC as X. So AB will be 41 minus X. So what is AB? 41 minus X. And what is BC? X. Now what's the, how will you construct the equation? How will you construct the equation? Pythagoras. Pythagoras theorem. Very good. So 41 minus x the whole square plus x square is equal to 29 square. So after this you can proceed. We are not solving this further. You are not supposed to leave it like this. You need to work it. Take all the terms to one side is equal to zero. You need to put it in the standard form, but we are not doing that now. So this is what you have to do. Perimeter is given. Then we got AB plus BC is 41. We took BC to the other side. And then we took BC as X. So AB is equal to 41 minus X. So we'll put this in the uh, uh, triangle. X and 41 minus X, we'll put it in the triangle. BC is X. AB is 41 minus X. We'll put it in the triangle. Now, how do we connect these three things? To get an equation, you need to connect the three things. Maybe using a formula. See, like if you're given uh, length and breadth of a rectangle and area. So area is equal to L into B. You need to just use something to connect the to connect the information given. So here you know the three sides of the right triangle. So Pythagoras theorem will connect them. And that's how we get the equation. Is this fine, children? Please listen yes, to me. Don't try to solve this. Yes, it's a, yeah, see, this class is an active discussion class wherein you will be taking away or you will be see taking away if it is new to you. Otherwise, you'll be recalling the ideas. If you already know it, you're recalling them. So that way you will be able to remember better. Yeah. Yes, I want the idea from you. Convert this to a quadratic equation. Convert this one to a quadratic equation in Y. That is your uh, task. Convert the given equation to a quadratic equation in Y. Quadratic equation in Y. Yeah, tell me. Three minutes time. I'll not disturb you. Two y squared minus y is equal to twenty. Somebody's mic, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. I think it's Shreyas because you're talking. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Shreyas. Shreyas, sorry. Yeah. Yes, Shreyas. 
2y square minus y is equal to 28. Very good. Very good. All right. So 2x. Very good, Dashreyas. Uh, so you need to write. <coughs> You need to write uh, 2 by 3 as 2 into 1 by 3. Let me work this. So this is what is given. OK, so 2 x to the power 2 into 1 by 3 minus x to the power 1 by 3 is equal to 28. So 2 x to the power 1 by 3, the whole square. Because see, that's when you multiply the powers, right? When will you multiply the powers? See now when you have a square the whole cubed, what will you write it as a to the power two into three? So when do you multiply the powers? When they are like this. Relate it two into uh, two into one by three. So that means you can write it as x to the power one by three the whole square. So here you will this is a case where you will multiply the powers two into one by three. See this is the example. A square the whole cube. How will you proceed? A to the power 2 into 3. So A to the power 6. In the same way, 2. Now we are going back. So, like from this step, this is given to us. This is given to us. From this, you can write A square the whole cube, or you can even write A cubed the whole square. Anything. But you should write it according to the situation. So, since we have x to the power 1 by 3 here, we'll put x to the power 1 by 3 inside the bracket. We'll put the 2 outside. Of course, it is also x to the power 2, the whole power 1 by 3. That's right. So again, you'll have to act according to the situation. But we have x to the power 1 by 3 here. So we'll put 1 by 3 inside and the 2 outside. All right. So uh, minus x to the power 1 by 3 is equal to 28. Now let x to the power 1 by 3 be equal to y. So 2 into x to the power 1 by 3 is y. y square minus y is equal to 28. So we have converted this to a quadratic equation in y. 2y square minus y uh, minus 28 is equal to 0. OK, I think I have the answers for this one. I was not able to type it today. Tell it the answers. So you will get uh, when you work this, you know, you get uh, y is equal to 4 or y is equal to minus 7 by 2 minus 7 by 2 all right y is equal to 4 or y is equal to minus 7 by 2 that's what you get all right now how do you proceed see how to solve the equation that you know so on solving you get y is equal to 4 or y is equal to minus 7 by 2 now who's y x to the power 1 by 3 so x to the power 1 by 3 is equal to 4 x to the power 1 by 3 is equal to 4. Now cube this on both sides because you need to find the value of x. You need to find the value of x. So cube this on both sides. So x to the power 1 by 3, the whole cubed is equal to 4 cubed. Cube it on both sides. So 3, 3 will get cancelled. So x is equal to 64. x is equal to 64. Similarly, the other one, y is equal to. Yeah, y is equal to uh, minus 7 by 2. And what is y? x to the power 1 by 3 is equal to minus 7 by 2. How to find the value of x? Cube it on both the sides. So x to the power 1 by 3, the whole cubed is equal to minus 7 by 2, the whole cubed. See, we need to get rid of that 1 by 3 to find the value of x. So we are cubing it on both the sides. So this 3, 3 will get cancelled. x is equal to minus 343 uh, by 8. 
because minus 7 by 2 into minus 7 by 2 into minus 7 by 2 is minus 343 by 8. Understood, children? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so you need yes. to convert the very good. You need to convert the given equation to a quadratic form by using the concept of exponents. So you must write x to the power 2 by 3 as x to the power 1 by 3 the whole square. Then let x to the power 1 by 3 be equal to any other variable y, a, b, c, anything. So y. So you must uh, rewrite the given equation using y. So when you do that, you get 2y square minus y minus 28 is equal to 0. You will have to rewrite the given equation using the variable y. And solve for y. That you know. You can do by splitting the middle term or the quadratic formula. So you got the two values for y. But you should find x, not y. You should find x. So y is 4. That means x to the power 1 by 3 is 4. Cube on both the sides. To get rid of 1 by 3, you should cube it on both the sides. So like that, you find the two values of x. See, you can take a screenshot if you, you know, if you want the pictures, you can take a screenshot. So I don't have to tell you all that. If you want it from the beginning, I can show you. See here, this is the first one. If you want to take a picture, please do it now. Please take a picture, children, if you want. Quick. Second one. Third. And four. Kindly don't request them later. Don't ask me to send. It's tedious for me because I have other things also to do. So do not request. Take it now. Yeah. Completing the square you don't have, so I'll just ignore this using the quadratic formula. Yes, so solve for x using the quadratic formula. So we'll first find the first. See, whenever you have to use a quadratic formula, first bring out the values of a, b, and c. Before that, check if the equation is in the standard form. Yes, it is in the standard form. X square, x constant. Yes. Okay, look out for, look out for that. X square, x constant. Yes, it is in the standard form. So nothing you have to do. You can directly uh, get the values of A, B, and C. So what is A? What is A, children? Quickly, A, past root three. Root three. B, three. Root three. C, Ten. Ten. C, minus eight. eight. Two. Minus eight two. D is equal to past. B past. square minus four AC. B square minus four AC. B square is what? Ten square. Ten, Ten square. square. Minus four into? Root 3 into root minus, root 8 3. Root 3. minus 8 root 3. So 100 minus into minus plus 3 3 is the root 3 into root 3 is 3. 3 4s are 12. 12 8s are 96. 196. D is equal to 196. Next, what you should do? X is equal to minus B plus or minus root D by 2 A root b square minus 4ac that's what is root d always see step one see if the equation is in the standard form if it is not in the standard form you should put it in the standard form then bring out the values of a b and c then find d the discriminant d find d now use the formula x is equal to minus b plus or minus root d by 2a substitute x is equal to minus b so minus 10 plus or minus root 196 by 2a, 2 into root 3, 2 root 3. So x is equal to, uh, you know, 196 square root is 14. So minus 10 plus 14 by 2 root 3. I'll write it directly. What is minus 10 plus 14? 4 by 2 plus root 3. Plus 4. Yeah, or x is equal to minus 10 minus 14. So minus 24 by 2 root 3. Am I right? Minus 10 minus 14 by 2 root 3. Then simplify and rationalize this. That's all. You must rationalize. On, simplify, on simplifying, you get x is equal to 
2 by root 3. So rationalize this into root 3 by root 3. So 2 root 3 by 3. Then the other value of x is uh, minus 12 by root 3. Rationalize, multiply and divide by root 3. So minus 12 root 3 by <coughs> 3, which is minus 4 root 3. Minus 12 root 3 by 3, which is minus 4 root 3. So these are the two values for uh, x. These are the solutions. 2 root 3 by 3 and minus 4 root 3 are the solutions of the quadratic equation. And we found the solutions using the quadratic formula. If the quadratic equation is in y, then you must write y is equal to minus b. See, you should not always write x is equal to. If the quadratic equation is in y, then you must write y is equal to minus b plus or minus root d by 2a. You must uh, write the variable here. Not always x. If the variable is x, then x is equal to. If the variable is n, n is equal to minus b plus or minus root d by 2a. If the variable is z, z is equal to minus b plus or minus root d by 2a, like that. Take a picture. Yeah. If minus 4 is a root of the equation, so we will not read ahead, okay? So we have something there. So we will read only this. We will read only this. If minus 4 is a root of the equation, so the equation is x square plus 2x plus uh, 4p is equal to 0. If it's a root, it will satisfy the equation. If it is a root, it will satisfy the equation. That means wherever there is x, use minus 4. Minus 4 is a root of the equation. That means wherever there is x, use minus 4 because it will satisfy the equation. So minus 4 the whole square plus 2 into minus 4 plus 4. Don't put minus 4 for p, not for p, only for x. Wherever there is x, use minus 4. So 4p will come as it is, is equal to 0. Wherever there is x, use minus 4. So 16 minus 8 plus 4p is equal to 0. 4p is equal to minus 8 when it goes to the other side. Minus 8, p is equal to minus 2. So we found the value of p. So I did not read the question ahead. Okay, so we found p. Now read. Find k for which the equation, this one, is equal to 0 is a perfect square. So the question is, see, this is an information given to you. They are telling you that uh, minus 4 is a root of this equation. OK, that's an information for you. Minus 4 is a root of this uh, equation is an information. What is your question? You should find k. You must find k for which this equation is a perfect square. It's a perfect square. So very important. Uh, for uh, for a perfect square, when the equation is a perfect square, the value of d will be zero. The value of d will be zero. So for curious minds, I can just tell you why. Uh, so now just uh, take a uh, you know a perfect square like a very simple one. I'll take um, x square uh, minus 10x uh, plus 25 is equal to zero. Yeah, this is a perfect square <clears throat> because this is nothing but uh, x minus 5 the whole square. There's nothing but x minus 5 the whole square is equal to 0. The perfect square. x minus 5 the whole square is a perfect square. So when you expand, you get x square minus 10x plus 25 is equal to 0. Now x minus 5 the whole square is equal to 0 is a perfect square. Okay, so that's what is x square minus 10x plus 25 is equal to 0. Now let's find the value of d for this. Let's find the value of d. d is equal to b square. b square is minus 10 square b square minus 4 into a into c. Yes or no? Yes or no. Yeah, so yes. d is equal to, very good, 100 minus 100, d is equal to 0. Convinced? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so yes. when the quadratic, e very good, when the quadratic equation is a perfect square, the value of d is 0. Any perfect square you take, you just write anything of your choice. You just write 3x minus 4, the whole square is equal to 0 and expand this one. Just write any perfect square. You can write fractions also. 
Okay, just write anything of your choice and check the value of D. So like 3x minus 4, the whole square is equal to 0. Expand this, what will you get? 9x squared minus 24x plus 16 is equal to 0. Let's find D for this. This one is a perfect square. Let's find D for this. D is equal to minus B. So minus minus 24, so plus 24. Minus B plus, uh, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. D is equal to B square minus 4AC. D is equal to B square minus 4AC. B square minus 24 square. B square minus 4 into A into C. 4 into A into C. So D is equal to 576. And I think you will get the same thing here. Please check that. D is equal to 0. Yeah. Yes. Can we consider that uh, if it's a perfect square, it will have two equal roots and the only yeah, condition with roots. Is, uh, yeah, that means it has two equal roots. Yes, the, yes we sir. will be working with the condition D is equal to zero, which also means it has two equal roots. Yes, D is equal to zero means the quadratic equation has two equal roots or Coincident roots. Equal is also coincident roots. When the quadratic equation is given to be a perfect square, the value of D will be zero. Was that your question, Ananya? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, since it is two equal roots, we can directly take the condition D equal to zero. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. Okay. No, here I'm trying to show. No, no, I'm trying to explain this one. Uh, see, when it's a perfect square, when the quadratic equation is a perfect square, the condition is D is equal to zero. If it's given that a quadratic equation is a perfect square, to find the value of K, we'll, we'll go ahead with the condition D is equal to zero. I was trying to, uh, you know, explain why D is equal to zero when the quadratic equation is a perfect square. So I'm just showing you that C D is zero. When you take a perfect square, C you're getting D is zero. I'm just trying to show that. All right. Yes. Okay. So when you take a when you take a quadratic equation which is a perfect square which is a perfect square, you find the value of D, it will always be zero. So that is the condition. When the quadratic equation is a perfect square, the value of D is zero. See, to work, to find the value of K, you need to work with some condition. See, like in one case earlier, uh, we were given a word problem and a, a situation and we were asked to find the frame the equation. So we connected the three sides of the right triangle using the Pythagoras theorem. So like that here to find K, how do you do it? You'll have to work with this condition. D is equal to zero. Why D is zero? Because it's a perfect square. It's given that this quadratic equation is a perfect square. The minute you see it's a perfect square, that means the value of D will be zero. Write that condition. D is equal to zero. See, with the first one, what did you do? Minus four is a root. So what did you do? In place of X, you used minus four, and that way you were able to find the value of P. Have that. Now the second part, this is the second part. This is the second part. Perfect square. Perfect square. So that means D is zero. Now next uh, is the given is this one in the standard form X square plus P into one plus three K. You can put the X here plus seven into three plus two K is equal to zero. Yes, absolutely. It, it is in the standard form. See it. You can see the X square term. You can see the X term and its coefficient and you can see the constant without X or X square. Yes or no? Yes, Class, use the emoji. Raise your hand. Yeah. Ram, Ananya, Nandini, Rajarajeshwari, Harini, Sneha, Tarun, Hitesh, Shreyas, Meera, Shubha, and Pranav. Very good. All right, children. Uh, so it is the given equation. It is in the standard form. It is in the standard form. You can see x square, you can see x. I just put the x behind. I put the x behind and the constant. So now I'll just work everything quickly again. So x square, I'm coming from the beginning. This is one thing and this is another thing. 
but the same question. So take up, I'm doing it again. 2x plus 4p is equal to 0. OK, so minus 4 the whole square plus 2 into minus 4 plus 4p is equal to 0. Uh, 16 minus 8 plus 4p is equal to 0. So on working this, you know, we got p is equal to minus 2. Correct? We got p is minus 2. Now the other one is x square plus p into 1 plus 3k of x plus 7 into 3 plus 2k is equal to 0. So what's the value of A? 1. B children, what's B? B, B. 1 plus B. 3. Mom, P 1 plus 3K. P into 1 plus 3K. Ignore X. Sir. Everything other than X. Just cover X. Sir. Use your finger and cover X. The rest of it is B. Use your finger and cover only the X term. X, sir. not X term, that X. Sir. The rest of it is B. P into 1 plus 3K. And what is C? Everything. 7 into 3 plus 2K. This is C. Now, what is the condition? D is equal to 0. Why? Because it's a perfect square. And what is D? B square minus 4AC is equal to 0. B square minus 4AC is equal to 0. What is B square? P into, see, all this you write very carefully. P into 1 plus 3K, if you put the square here, you're wrong. The whole of B squared, you should be careful. The whole of B, whatever is B, the entire thing is squared. So you should put the bracket. You must use a square bracket and put the square outside. The square is for P and for 1 plus 3K. B squared minus 4 into A into C. See here, 4 into A, which is 1, into C, into C is into 7 of 3 plus 2K. B square, be careful while writing B square. Don't write P into 1 plus 3K square. Whole square minus 4AC is equal to 0. Complete D is equal to 0. Now work this. Tell me. I want it from you quickly. P square plus 1. P plus square three. into 1 plus 3 whole square. 1 plus 3k whole square. No, no simplify and tell me. 2ab is what? 9k square. No. Ah, 2, okay. Uh, 2ab is? 6k. 6k. Plus 9? Minus 7 fours are 28. 28 into 3 plus 2k is equal to 0. We have to find the value of k children, k, k. So, but we know, we, oh, I didn't use the value of p. Is it okay? You can put it here. You could have taken the value of p here itself, children. Here itself, p is minus 2, right? Here itself, you should have taken my, forgot, uh, you can take minus 2 here itself. Why oh, you can put it here? Nothing wrong. Even if you, supposing you do this in the exam, you forget like me or you forget. You can put 2 here. P is minus 2. You can put it here also. Actually, I should have taken it here. Actually, I should have taken it here. I should have taken it here. But in case you forget, you don't have to erase it like this. Okay, so this is what? Uh, uh, my P is minus 2. So it will be minus 2 here. P is minus 2 children. X I put here behind. The value of P we got minus 2. So instead of P minus 2. So B is equal to minus 2. Minus 2. So out here it will be 4. This quadratic equation we already got the value of P. Take the value of P. P is minus 2. So X square. P is minus 2. So minus 2 into 1 plus 3K. X I put it behind. Plus this one is equal to 0. So A, B, C. Minus 2 into 1 plus 3K. D is 0. B square will be minus 2 into 1 plus 3K the whole square. So it will be 4 because minus into minus is plus. 4 into when you expand. A plus B the whole square. 1 plus 6K plus 9K square. Okay is equal to 0. So 4 plus uh, 24k plus 36k square 
um, minus 4 to carry 84 minus 56k is equal to 0. After this, what children? You have a quadratic equation. Solve it and tell me. Solve and tell me the values of k. The question is to find k. See, we found k. We are going. To, we are about to find k. Solve and tell me the values of k. Continue from here. Let me see who can give it first. Have the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the answer? Shubha, Pranav and Meera, are you following? Yes, ma'am. Of k, k is equal to 2, k is equal to minus 10 by 9. Minus 9 by? Minus 10 by 9. Minus 10 by 9. Is it uh, Shubha? Yes, ma'am. Very good. K is equal to 2, K is equal to minus 10 by 9. Very good. Uh, Shubha, is it possible for you to take a picture of your answer and put it on WhatsApp to me now? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, do it. And that's right. Uh, X is equal to, uh, sorry, K is equal to 2 or minus 10 by 9 is the correct answer. So this is a very co uh, commonly, you know, uh, happening question in the board paper, mostly asked even in schools. Very simple. Anybody struggling to get two and minus uh, ten by nine? Tarun Murali. Yeah, children. See, I just I want to finish and keep going ahead, and you guys are taking time. Have you all got or no? <laughs> no response. Okay, I'm going ahead. Shubha, have you sent it? Yeah, right. Ma'am? Yeah? Ma'am, the answer is K is minus 10 by 9 and uh, K is 2, ma'am. Perfect, Meera, perfect. Yes, ma'am, I got it. Very good. 
Um, can I send? Yes, yes, Mira, please. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Let me do, do it here. So I have a 36 uh, K squared and then uh, what is this plus oh, so difficult? What is this minus 32? Huh? 32 K, okay, am I right? Is this correct children? Yes, ma'am. Then minus yes, yes, ma 80, no? Is equal to zero. Yes. So divide by Divide by 4 throughout, so you get 9k square minus 8k minus 10 is equal to 0, correct? Then you divide by, when you divide minus, by minus, minus 20. Ah, 22. Ma'am, minus 20. Divide by 4 throughout, so you get 9k square minus 8k minus 20 is equal to 0, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, then you have to get these values. K is equal to 2 or minus 10 by 9. One more thing you can do is you can you can simplify here or you can simplify it here itself. I'll tell you that. You can simplify here also. You can either divide by 4 throughout here. Or. Uh, see, uh, I think because Harini and Sneha mostly respond. Uh, please tell me this one. Okay, Harini, Sneha, please tell me this one. I'll just uh, clear the screen. I'm just clearing the screen. Yeah. Tell me one of you. Um, 4 plus 24K. 4 plus 24K. 9k square minus 8k minus 20 equal to 0. No, no, I don't want that. Okay, I have it in this. I'll write it myself. 4 into 1 plus 3k, the whole square, minus 28 into 3 plus 2k. Did we have this step? Yes or no, all of you? At a point, we got this one, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, divide yes. by 4 throughout. You can divide by 4 throughout here itself. So what will it be? When you divide by 4 throughout, at any stage you can do it. You can divide by 4 throughout here itself. So that means divide this one by 4, divide this one by 4, and divide this one by 4. Dividing by 4 throughout meaning divide each term in the LHS and RHS by 4. So what happens? 4 and 4 cancels. 4 ones are 4 sevens are. And this is 0. So you will get 1 plus 3k the whole square. Minus uh, 7 into 3 plus uh, 2k is equal to 0. So expand this and the usual thing, children. Same thing. So you can divide by four throughout here itself. All right. And then you will get a quadratic equation in K. You'll have to solve the quadratic equation and find the two values of K. So what is the question here? Minus four is a root. When this is given, you should substitute the value of X here and find the value of P. So from this you get P is equal to minus 2. So that means here this P is minus 2. This P is minus 2. Somebody's mic is enabled. Please disable your mic. That means this P is minus 2. From this we get P is equal to 2. Minus 2, sorry. So that means here P is minus 2. Minus 2. And if it's a perfect square, the value of D is 0. The value of D is 0. Just writing this one and B square minus 4AC is equal to 0. D means B square minus 4AC is equal to 0. And you know what is B? You know what are A, B and C? Just substitute. Simplify quadratic equation in K and find the two values of K. That's all. Three marks. Find K if this quadratic equation has real roots. See, real roots, there are two cases for real roots. See here, D less than 0, no real roots, imaginary. D equal to 0, real roots. D greater than 0, real roots. That means D greater than equal to 0 is the condition for real roots. See, listen to this very carefully. 
equal roots. Here. So here there are no real roots, no real roots when D is less than zero. So leave this one. Greater than zero, real roots. Equal to zero, real roots. That means both both for real roots. So combine the equal, uh, combine the conditions. D is greater than or equal to zero. Combine the conditions. D greater. See this is greater. This is equal to. So D greater than or equal to zero is the condition for real roots. Real roots means what? Root, real roots exist. Roots are there and the roots are real. So here also the roots are real. And here. So real roots means both these cases. So the combined condition is D greater than or equal to zero for real roots. Supposing uh, they tell you that the uh, you know roots are unequal. Unequal means only this one. That means D is greater than zero. Equal means, see, uh, it need not be uh, be given that uh, the roots are real and unequal. Simply unequal also means real and unequal. Unequal means real and unequal. Equal means real and equal. Sometimes they'll just tell you that the roots are equal for equal roots. Equal roots means real and uh, real and equal. Unequal roots, real unequal. Coincident roots. Equal roots, distinct roots, different roots, unequal roots. The condition for unequal roots, D greater than zero. The condition for equal roots, D is equal to zero. The condition for real roots, D greater than or equal to zero. Condition for unequal roots, D greater than zero. Only this one. The condition for equal roots, equal roots, only this one, D is equal to zero. Coincident roots, D is equal to zero. Distinct roots, D greater than zero because unequal means distinct, equal means coincident. But in both the cases, the roots are real. So the condition for real roots is D greater than equal to zero. Condition for real roots. So you must use that condition. So find K. If uh, this equation has real roots, real roots, the condition is D greater than equal to zero. That means B square minus four AC is greater than or equal to zero. D greater than or equal to zero. B square minus four AC greater than or equal to zero. Now what is B? Cover X. The rest of it is B. What is B? Minus six K. Minus six K, the whole square. Don't write children minus six K square like this. B square is not minus six K square like this. What is B? That full thing is squared. Minus six square, sorry, minus six K. The full thing is squared. So this is a common mistake we can make in a hurry. Though we know it, we could make this mistake in a hurry. OK, so B square minus 4 AC, 4 into A, 9 into C2, greater than or equal to 0. 36 K square minus uh, 72, greater than or equal to 0. 36 K square, greater than or equal to 72. K square is greater than or equal to 72 by 36. K square is greater than or equal to 2. So K now, this is important. Make a note of this. This is important, children. Write down. I have to tell you something here. Write down. Work this. Write the question and work this neatly.
Done? Yes, ma. Yes. So continuing. K square is greater than or equal to two. Now, when it's an inequality, you'll have to be careful. Okay. So K square greater than or equal to two. So K will be greater than or equal to plus or minus square root of two, right? See, when you have uh, when you have K square is equal to 25, is equal to 25. So then you say K is equal to plus or minus five. Similarly here, you will get plus K will be plus or K will be plus or minus root two. Plus root two minus root two. Now, k greater than or equal to take the positive one with the same inequality and for the negative for the negative one take the reverse inequality k less than or equal to minus root 2 see you will get k square see okay so when you have like a square is equal to 2 so you will get a is equal to plus or minus square root of 2 supposing a square is equal to 2 then a is equal to plus or minus square root of 2. Okay, so you get plus or minus square root of 2. Take the plus root 2 with the same inequality and the minus 2 with the reversed inequality, less than. No time to explain in the revision class, so just take it like that. There is a reason behind that. Now just take it like that. What Take the positive value with the same inequality. Whatever is the inequality, take it with the same thing. Reverse the inequality for the negative value. That's all. So here it is greater than or equal to. So k greater than or k square is greater than or equal to 2. So k will be plus or minus root 2. k will be plus or minus root 2. So take plus root 2 with the same inequality. What is inequality? Greater than or equal to. So take plus root 2 with this and reverse the inequality and take the negative value. Reverse the inequality and take the negative value. So K can be anything. The what's the, what? Do, what do we understand by this? K can be anything greater than or equal to square root of two. And K will be or K will be less than or equal to the square less than or equal to the uh, negative square root of two minus square root of two. Or so th there is no here. There is no one value for K. There are so many values for K. Here there is no one value for K. There are many values for K. There are so many different values for K for which this equation can have real roots. See, imagine K greater than root 2. So there are so infinitely many numbers greater than root 2. K greater than root 2. Greater than root 2. So many numbers greater than root 2. Infinitely many numbers greater than root 2. There are so many values for K. I'll just work it again. The, what, now, uh, Pranav, what is the uh, condition for equal roots? What's the condition for equal roots? Meera, what's the condition for equal roots? Ma'am, B is equal to zero, real and equal. Okay. Shubha, what's the condition for unequal roots? D, D is greater than zero. And uh, Shubha, what's the condition for real roots? Uh, D is greater than or equal to zero. Very good. I'll quickly work this. Real roots means the first you should write the condition. It is given that the quadratic equation has real roots. You don't have to prove that it has real roots. That they are two different things. Show that the equation has real roots. That is different from this one. Here it is given that the equation has real roots. This equation has real roots. That's given to you. 
So you can take the condition d greater than or equal to zero. You can just take this condition. How do you know d is greater than or equal to zero? Because it is given that the equation has real roots. If you are asked to show that the equation has real roots, then you should find the discriminant. You must find the discriminant. You cannot take the condition. You can take the condition only if it is given that the equation has equal roots, unequal roots, and things like that. So real roots means first write the condition. D is greater than or equal to zero. D means B square minus 4AC is greater than or equal to zero. B is minus 6K whole square, not minus 6K square. B square minus 4 into A into C greater than or equal to zero. 36K square minus 72. 36K square transpose. Divide, divide 72 by 36, 2. Now be careful. K, same inequality, positive root 2. K, reversed inequality, minus root 2. So K can, will be greater than or equal to square root of 2, or K will be less than or equal to minus square root of 2. Understood, children? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so be careful with the condition for equal roots. Unequal equal means real and equal. Unequal means real and unequal. Coincident means equal. Distinct means unequal. Real roots means both. Both equal and unequal are real roots. Both equal and unequal are real roots. So D greater than or equal to zero. Okay. All right. The two trains. I just try to read the question and make the. Uh, let's see how uh, what you can uh, process out of this. I'll just come back, children. I'll have, have some water and come back.
What's up, children? Got the equation? All right. Two trains leave a railway station at the same time. The first. The first train. So it's like you cannot see railway station is long, but you cannot draw a long platform like this and say that this is the railway station. No, you can't do that. You just have to represent everything by a point or a line segment. That's all. Point line segment. That's all we can do. So this is the railway station. This is like the railway station. OK, so from the same place to uh, from the same railway station, two trains leave at the same time. Two. This is the railway station. Two trains leave a railway station. This is the railway station at the same time. The first train travels towards west. So like this, it's going. The first train is going like this towards west. It's traveling. So this is the distance it's covering. This is the distance it's covering. Then and the second due north, the second one is going like this. It's traveling like this. OK, and you know that the directions north and west are perpendicular to each other. The directions north and west, they are perpendicular to each other. OK, so this is so these two line segments are perpendicular to each other. Now if I call this O, uh, this one A and this one B, this is the first train. This is the second train. The second train. Uh, so the the distance is north and uh, west are perpendicular to each other. So you have a right angle here like this. And what is OA? It's a distance covered and OB distance covered by the two trains. OK, now the first train travels 35 kilometers per hour faster than the second. OK, so that means uh, if the uh, speed of the second train is X, OK, the speed of the second. I'll send the answer for this children. Don't worry. Just understand now if the speed of the second train. If the speed of the second train OK is X, then the speed of the first train, the speed of the first train is equal to X plus 35 because 35 kilometers per hour more. So these are the speeds. As we are reading, you know, we are writing something as we are reading, we write something whatever we understand. OK, so don't read the full thing and start thinking how to do. Don't don't do that. Read and just keep doing whatever little you can understand from reading that. Uh, you know, make a picture or write write down something. So from this we made a representation. The first train travels due west and the second due north. We could make a representation like this. We got OA, OB and we realized that uh, the two directions are perpendicular to each other. And then the next thing is the first train travels 35 kilometers per hour faster than the second. So we said X and X plus 35 after two hours. Now see here speed and time now. Speed and now time after two hours they are saying we have the speeds of the two trains. Now if after two hours, so they are, they are telling us the time after two hours, they are 130 kilometers apart. So that means the two trains, you know, they start from O. One is going along OA, the other one along OB. Like this, they go for two hours. Like this, they go for two hours. So let us say that OA is the distance covered by the first train in two hours. And OB, see, line segment always represents distance. You cannot write speed or time there. For a line segment, you cannot write X plus 35 and X. Speed cannot be used for a line segment. For a line segment, you must write the distance. OK, so what is OA? It is the distance. Listen to me. OA is the distance covered by the first train in two hours. What is the speed? X plus 35. What is OB? Distance covered by the second train in two hours. What's the speed? X. What is speed into time? Distance. So how do you find the distance? Speed into time. What's the time? For both it is two. Speed, one is X, the other is X plus 35. Now for the first train, speed is two. Uh, sorry, uh, speed is X plus 35. Time is two. So speed into time. You know the distance is speed into time. So speed into time. Time, speed. 
This is the distance. So many kilometers. This is the distance. OA is 2H plus 70 kilometers. And what about the second train? 2 is the time. Speed is X. So 2X. Speed into time. <clears throat> Speed is uh, X. And time is 2. So 2X. Now, if after, so now we've, uh, if we've got the expressions for OA and OB. Now, after two hours, they're 130 kilometers apart. Where is, where is the uh, first train after, at the end of uh, two hours? Here it is. See, train, so you cannot draw a long one like this. Train is now just a point. Here the train, the train is at A after two hours. This train is at B after two hours. The first train is at A after two hours and the second train is at b after two hours so what's the distance between them this is the distance between them this is the distance between them after two hours that is 130 kilometers that is 130 kilometers the distance between them a and b after two hours so the line segment a b is 130 kilometers see kilometers Line segment is always distance. AB is equal to 130 kilometers. Now, how will you connect all these three children? How will you connect all these three? Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem. That's all. So, Pythagoras theorem will give you the equation. You will get a quadratic equation and uh, find the two values of x. Okay. So, I have the answer. So, I'll tell you. So when you use Pythagoras theorem, uh, the two values for X are minus 60 and 25. Minus 60 and 25. Minus 60 is not possible. Speed cannot be negative. So leave that. Ignore that. X is equal to 25. So the speed of the second train is 25 kilometers per hour and the speed of the first train is 25 plus 35. 60 kilometers per hour. That's all. So what are, what are the things here? The directions are perpendicular to each other. So we get a right triangle. And how will you represent the railway station? By a dot. Don't draw. Train is, this is one train, this is the other train, this is the platform. No. Everything is just a dot. This is the railway station. One train goes like this, the other train goes like this. So O is the railway station. A is the position of the first train after two hours. B is the position of the second train after two hours. This is the distance between them after two hours, which is 130 kilometers. What is the distance OA? Speed into time. What is speed? X plus 35. What is time? 2. Speed into time. What is OB? The distance covered by the second train in two hours. What's the speed? x time 2 so 2x two speed into time speed into time right triangle connect them using pythagoras theorem get the quadratic equation in x solve and find the two values of x x is equal to minus 60 which is not possible so take the other value x is equal to 25 and hence find the speeds of the two trains was it, was that easy to understand children Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah, others, what about the others? Any questions? Another 10 minutes, I'll wind up the session. Give me 10 more minutes. Yeah, see this one. Find the values of A and B. Read the question. We'll give you a minute. Okay, so find the values of A and B. So you should find the values of A and B for which X is equal to minus 3 by 4 and X is equal to minus 2 are the roots of this equation. And we know that roots will satisfy the equation. 
roots will satisfy the equation. In place of x, you should use 3 by 4. In place of x, you should use minus 2. And you will get two equations. Solve the equations to find the values of a and b. See here. So I'm just calling this. Uh, I'm just calling this one p of x. I'm just calling that p of x like a ninth standard. A x squared plus b x minus six. So when x is uh, three by four, p of three by four is zero. That is in place of x. Sir. In place of x, if you use three by four, the value will be zero because it's a root. Because it is a root. OK, so if these things are complicated or difficult for you to recall, ignore it. If you feel that, you know, no, the, these two steps are not able to recall. Don't don't worry about it now. These two steps, just leave it. You have to do this one. So in the equation, in place of X, use 3 by 4. See, that's what I've done. A, X squared, X is 3 by 4. Here, B, X, X is 3 by 4. In the equation, in place of X, use 3 by 4. Use 3 by 4. Yeah. Uh, so in place of X, use uh, 3 by 4. And see, you get an equation in A and B. You get one equation in A and B. Then again, take up the equation uh, given to you. And in place of X, use minus 2. See here. In place of X, use minus 2. Where there is X, use minus 2. A into minus 2, the whole square. Plus B into minus 2. Minus 6 is equal to 0. You get another equation in A and B. Solve these two equations and find the values of A and B. You can take a picture if you want. You will get two equations in A and B. Solve and find the values of A and B. Completing the square you don't have, so I'll leave it. This might take time. I'll do this in the next class. Splitting the middle term. OK, let's do something easy like this here. Now look at this. Find the value of. Find the value of. The expression given there. All right. OK, so we'll say let. Let uh, you know X be equal to let X be equal to square root of 6 plus square root of 6 plus square root of 6 plus it goes on like that. It's a nest. It's a nested square root. Nested square root. Nested square root. Now let X be equal to. Somebody said the door children. I'll just come.
Yeah, children. So let X be equal to the given expression. Now square this on both the sides. Square on both the sides. OK, so what will you get? X square is equal to. OK, I'll do it here itself. So when you square this on both the sides. This is what you will get. What will you get? You will get this. OK, we said let X be equal to this one. We said let X be equal to this. OK, so this is what happens when you square. So X square is equal to. What happens when you square this? This uh, outermost square root is eliminated, right? Square root of uh, like when you have square root of. So root A the whole square is A. When you square this, this outermost square root is eliminated. This one goes away. So you have six plus square root of six plus square root of six plus square root of six. It goes on like that. It goes on like that. Am I right, children? Am I clear? Yes, ma'am. So x square yes, is equal to six plus. What is this? This is x. That's x. Yes or no? Yes, no. That's all. Yes, you got the quadratic equation. You got the quadratic equation. Solve and find the values of x. And whenever uh, supposing, see, supposing it is for two or three marks, you can leave with. Uh, if you get one positive or negative value for x, you can just leave your answer like this. X is equal to say like uh, three or minus four. You can leave it like that. But sometimes this is asked in objectives. You'll have to select one correct option. Then take the positive square root. Take the positive value. If it is a, if this question is asked in objectives where you'll have to select one answer. Choose the positive value. If you're getting one negative and one positive, choose the positive value. If it is for two or three marks, if it's a subjective question, two or three marks, leave the answer. X is equal to that positive value. X is equal to the neg negative value. Yeah. Yeah, this is an objective question actually. That's why I've written no. or you can leave it. OK, if you ask me, then why have you written is equal to three? You can just ignore this line. You can leave it here. You can leave it here. This is mostly an objective question, so I've written the positive value as the answer. X is equal to three. Yeah, take a picture, children. Done. Yeah, I'll just uh, do this and wind up the session for today. Okay. Yeah, we'll just do this and uh, you know wind up the session for today. So see this children uh, solve for x using the quadratic formula. Use the quadratic formula and solve for x. Yeah, I want to tell you something here. Um, now, if it is simply solve for x, simply solve for x. OK, simply solve for x. x square minus uh, root 3 plus 1 of x uh, plus root 3 is equal to 0. Simply solve for x. So then what, would you, what you should do? First, open the bracket. Open the brackets. Free all the terms. Free all the terms first. Open the bracket and let all the terms free. OK, now see what you have. You have four terms. One X square term, two X terms and one constant. How do you proceed? By grouping. Group the first two terms and the last two terms. There are four terms. First is free the uh, terms. Remove the brackets. Now observe the equation. There is one X square term two x terms and one constant and it's in the correct order also. So simply group it now. Group the first two terms, last two terms. x into x minus root 3 minus 1 into x minus root 3 is equal to 0. So x minus 1 into x minus root 3 is equal to 0. So the two values of x are x is equal to 1 or x is equal to root 3. Finished. Yes or no? Take a picture. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, take a picture. So if we simply solve for X, use the simplest method. 
Why waste time with the with the quadratic formula? Why spend more time with the quadratic formula? If we simply solve for x, you can use any method. Yeah. Now the, here the heading is solve for x using the quadratic formula. Using the quadratic formula. So you have to use a quadratic formula. It is in the standard form. The given equation is in the standard form. You can see the x square term. You can see the x term. And you see the constant here. So it is in the standard form. So the values of A, B, C, A, B, and C, the values of A, B, C. Then find D. What is D? B square minus 4 is C. See, I always find D and substitute that here. I never work like square root of B square minus 4 is C here. Because sometimes when we go wrong, no, it's difficult to find the mistake. So when you find D separately and take it there, it's easier. So D is equal to B square minus 4 AC. So see here, B square minus 4 AC. So when you square this, you know, when you square this one, when you square this one, minus into minus plus. See, when you square this B square, when you square this, minus into minus plus. So root uh, 3 plus 1, the whole square. And here minus uh, 4 AC is minus 4 root 3. Now, why have I written directly this? Recall the identity. A plus B the whole square minus A minus B the whole square is equal to 4AB. So from this A plus B the whole square minus 4AB is A minus B the whole square. So this is of the form A plus B the whole square minus 4AB. See here 4AB. 4 into uh, th root 3 into 1. 4AB. So it is A minus B the whole square. A minus B the whole square. A plus B the whole square minus A minus B the whole square is equal to 4AB. So A plus B the whole square minus 4AB is A minus B the whole square. So this is of the form A plus B the whole square. Minus 4A, B is not there, into 1. You can just put that, minus 4AB. This is exactly of that form. So the answer is A minus B the whole square. Root 3 minus 1 the whole square. That is D. So now solve for X. X is minus B plus or minus root D by 2A. Substitute minus B. There's already minus and minus B. So it will become plus. Plus or minus root of D by 2A. Uh, this is uh, square, square and square root. So it just comes out as uh, root 3 minus 1. So first take uh, this plus this and then this one minus this one. Yeah, that you should know how to solve. So you get see exactly what we got earlier root 3 and 1 root 3 and 1. What we got earlier root 3 and 1. So remember the identity a plus b the whole square minus a minus b the whole square is equal to 4ab. And what's the other one related to this? What is A plus B the whole square plus A minus B the whole square? Past. 2 of A square plus B square. 2 of A square plus B square. Take a screenshot. Take a screenshot. All right. All right, children. Uh, so that's it for today's session. I hope it was useful. I hope you understood clearly. Yes or no, all of you? Yes, ma'am. Very nice. All right, children. So that's it for today's session. Thank you so much. Good night. You may leave the call. Shubha alone, stay back. Others may leave the call. Thank you.